do a brief introduction um, just to give you a little information about Stoss's background. <coughs> I want to tell you a story first is that when we were uh, in Ukraine, and I think we were at dinner, I can't remember where we were at the time, but I said to Stoss, if you ever come to the U.S., you know, look me up. And so um, about three months ago, I got a FaceTime message. <laughs> and he called one night and said, uh, oh, I'm here. <laughs> so I, th I thought he was just joking. And then uh, we spent probably about 15 minutes on the phone, um, FaceTime, and he showed me he was in Tennessee at the time, so it was kind of funny. So um, that was very, very interesting. But he's been here for almost two and a half months, something like that, traveling to different places throughout uh, Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky, Alabama, now Georgia, and they're headed back in a, in a couple of weeks. I forgot to mention this morning that while he was serving in the military, he served a little over two years, he can tell you the precise time, in, in the military, in the Ukraine Army. And while he served, he also served as the lead minister for his congregation in Lviv, which is about, about 90 people. So, I mean, that, that is incredible. Someone able to fully serve in the military and then also still serve a congregation. So, as I said earlier, he's a man of great passion for people, great passion for the kingdom, great passion for the Lord. So he's 31 years old. He's married for nine years. He has three, ch three children, Elise, George, and Harry. He graduated from the Bible Institute of Bear Valley, Ukraine, and have a master's degree in theology. He's also a graduate of the Kiev Academy of Pedological Sciences and have a master's degree in pedological sciences. I don't even know what that is. You're going to tell us what that is. Yeah, he's smart. You know, definitely smart. He's, he's also funny, by the way, too. So He's been serving in the Church of Christ since uh, 2011, youth minister in Slovenia, 2011 to 2013, preacher in Odessa, 2013 to 2015. Uh, he helped start the church in Lviv back in 2015, and um, from the beginning of the full-scale evasion in Russia and Ukraine, um, he has been part of the armed forces, as I said before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lead us in prayer, and the next voice you hear will be Stas T. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you so much for the privilege of being here and to learn more about the work uh, in Ukraine. And Lord, I've been so impressed as I've heard the different stories about faith, and under the extreme circumstances of war, uh, we have brothers and sisters across another part of the world, Father, still serving you fervently, Father, and, and their faith haven't wavered. And even in the midst of all this, Father, they have continued to carry the, the banner and, and continue to, to make disciples. And we are so grateful and thankful for their efforts. We pray for their country. We pray for resolution of this war. We pray that you bless this time we spend together this morning. Uh, be with Stas and his family as uh, if they leave here and they travel back to Alabama. Bless the time we spend together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nice. Good morning again. It's, um, I recognize in the U.S. that uh, Ukrainians preachers not often time here because of your pulpit size. <laughs> It's often time happened with me in states. So, uh, so my name is Stas. Actually, uh, T. It's my nickname just for you guys because uh, it's complicated for you to pronounce it Kuropiatnikov. Uh, <laughs> So uh, if you want to follow some church news or uh, from Ukraine or news basically about Ukraine, uh, you can find me by Stasti, so easy for you, like a drink. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Ukraine and uh, about uh, with what our church, our Christian facing. Uh, on the first slide, you can see uh, that uh, blue sky and yellow wheat, uh, and you can recognize Ukrainian flag by uh, this picture. It's actually what's mean for us. Uh, yellow wheat and blue uh, uh, clean blue sky. It's, it's, uh, it's what our flag 
have uh, meaning. So uh, when we see, when you will see uh, one more time the flag, you can see yellow wheat and blue skies, free land. It's what it's mean for us. It's w for what we fighting. Let me introduce a little bit my family. This is me, my wife Anne, uh, uh, my daughter Alice, George and Harry. Uh, so um, uh, they are here, so you can uh, uh, find them probably uh, in the kids' classes. So, uh, no, my wife uh, in the back, so you can, you can, you can say hello to her. Uh, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our work in Lviv. So, in 2015, we founded a congregation of the Church of Christ in Lviv. Uh, so, in the down, picture in the down, you can see the team what came to uh, Lviv, and in the picture of on the top, you can see the first meetings. It was a home church in the beginning, and our goal was to add to these six people. This is uh, this is me and my wife. This is uh, another leader, Bogdan, and uh, his wife Alina. My brother Dima and his wife Alona. And look on these baby faces. So uh, there, I was a 22 years old when we came to Lviv, established Church of Christ there. It was no Church of Christ in all city, uh, Lviv. Lviv, it's about, uh, right now, it's about one million population. And in all region, all district, it's no Church of Christ at all. Like three million population of all uh, region and no Church of Christ. So we have, uh, we had the idea and goal to establish congregation there was no uh, God's church. So, but uh, again, uh, we were 22 years old. Right now, uh, I, I will not trust myself in 22 years old. <laughs> in, that, in that case, I want to encourage you, encourage your eldership, encourage your ministers, encourage to try to believe in your youth. Because uh, we, we can see in the Bible often, often time then when uh, young people change uh, the world for God. And I want to encourage you people, you can do a lot of things for God. You can do, uh, uh, even you 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, you can do a lot of things for God. We established church in 20, when we were about 22 years old. Uh, so, uh, and I want to encourage you use, and I want to encourage uh, uh, all people in this church, eldership, ministers, believe in, the, uh, in young uh, I understand that sometimes can be hard. <laughs> uh, uh, as I said, sometimes I do not trust myself in 20 2022, but we need to remember our uh, days when we were young. Uh, so um, this picture, uh, picture on the right, left from you, it's me uh, two, uh, two weeks before full invasion war started, before. Uh, you can see a regular ministry preach the gospel. Uh, I don't remember the topic what I teach, taught in that days. But uh, and in the picture on the right, it's uh, same. It's me e two months after uh, I was uh, drafted to army to defend our land, and uh, it was hard time for me and my family. And um, I will share with you m more. Uh, more uh, pictures uh, and uh, needs for what we need to pray, for what I ask you to pray, with what church and Christian facing in my area, in my country. So, in the uh, beginning of the war, full invasion war, because for Ukraine, the war started in, not in 2022, war started in 2014, when the uh, Russians occupied it, uh, Crimea, and when Russians occupied uh, part of Donetsk and Lugansk region. Uh, my wife, uh, her parents, lost everything in 2014. Her, uh, their property, they fled, their jobs, uh, uh, because the Russians occupied uh, their hometown. So, uh, for Ukraine, uh, war started not in 2022, but full invasion war, when they start to attack all territory of our country, started from 2022. It's a uh, time when all the world uh, have known what's going on. So, and Lviv Church uh, become a hub for uh, a lot of refugees. Lviv located in the western part of Ukraine, close to Poland border. It's a big city. So many people who run away from the front line, who run away from the uh, combat area, they run first to uh, west, 
uh, and uh, Lviv it's a main uh, main I will say it's a main city in the western Ukraine actually by the way uh, size of Ukraine it's close to Texas just to make a bigger picture uh, uh, of size. So in the beginning of the full invasion war we evacuated hundreds of people at the uh, 2022. You can see different colors of the bosses. You can see this yellow, green and blue. Uh, I want, uh, we had more but I choose these pictures that you can see that's a different days. Like we, we evacuated a lot of women's and uh, children's from the children from uh, uh, war actions. And the hardest part of this uh, picture it's People said goodbye and did not know if they will see each other again. Because uh, men from 18 till 60 years old cannot leave, cannot cross the border, uh, ec except some uh, very specific reasons. So uh, all the men have, have to stay there and uh, defend their land. So uh, you can see that people hug each other, husband hug uh, her wife, and uh, they did not know that if they will see each other again, because uh, war happened on all territory of Ukraine. We have a lot of uh, uh, bad damages in all, all, all over Ukraine, even far away from front line. This is very hard part of uh, um, what's going on. And uh, uh, I just want to, uh, y that you will just try to imagine that you need to be separated from your family, from your kids uh, uh, for so long. And you do not know will you survive or not. So uh, next slide. Many brothers and sisters uh, serve in the army, protecting their homes and their families. Some died or went missing. So uh, we already know that some brothers in Christ already was killed on a battlefield. Uh, uh, our brothers uh, from uh, who was a member of Church of Christ. And, uh, and uh, some uh, brothers what was uh, missing and in uh, you know in a battlefield if you are missing uh, in the front line it's uh, mean that 99% uh, that you was killed but your body cannot be evacuated from the front line so let me mention about this guy in a helmet uh, this is our brother named Vlad uh, he need very much our prayers because he right now in the very bad spots of this war. I won't mention one more brother, this brother who pray for Lord's uh, for contribution. Uh, his name Alex, uh, and uh, he uh, right now in a very very bad spot on this war. So he, uh, two of these guys right now in a big big danger. Uh, so they need our prayers. I ask you to pray for them. I ask you to pray for every brothers and s for sure I know one sister who right now in army. I will uh, let, uh, tell you a little bit later about her. And uh, uh, let me tell you more about the brother Vlad in the helmet. His mother, our sister in Christ, she was a first victim of this, uh, f first victim of uh, church of, member of Church of Christ on this war. Uh, she tried to evacuate it from the city uh, named of Bakhmut. Maybe you heard about this city. Uh, and uh, she uh, tried to uh, leave a city uh, through another city, Kramatorsk, uh, where Russians bombed a uh, train station. And she was there. And it was no military, uh, military target for military purpose to uh, strike this area. It was just a crowd, big crowd of civilian people. And our sister in Christ was in this, uh, in this train station, and he, she was killed by Russian missile, a um, missile, missile. And uh, he had to bury her mother. Then he relocated to Western Ukraine, and he was just a couple months when he uh, was converted to Christ, when he was baptized. So he buried his mother. He uh, relocated to Western Ukraine. He spent two or three months uh, in in, uh, in my church. Uh, become a member of our church, and then he was drafted to uh, defend his land. And he still, uh, right now, tried if he can, if, if he can opportunity, he tried to connect for online worshiping in my church. So I ask you to pray for. It's not just them. It's not just five or six people. What you see in this pic on this picture, we have a lot of brothers and sisters, brothers and for sure one sister, what I know, uh, who served right now to defend, uh, in army, defend their land. Let me tell you uh, about the next picture. Many churches, churches case to exist along with the cities. On the picture on the left, you can see a 
beautiful parade, uh, kids has fun, uh, some celebration, I don't know this celebration and uh, what they celebrated. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see blue sky, kids has fun, um, sun shining day, 70,000 people, it's a population of this town, it's a Bakhmut. On the picture in the left, you can see what Russians did with this city. You can see uh, what they did it. They just burn it. Our sister in Christ, who was first victim of this uh, war, she was a uh, she lived in this town, and they burned it. We had a church of Christ there. Right now, it's a ghost city. Many people just uh, all all people just uh, or die or relocate it. Uh, and I try to make uh, your attention that it's the same city. It's the same city. Let me tell you a little bit about next picture. It's in Mariupol, probably you heard about this city. Uh, so from the picture in the left, you can see this Christmas tree and people have fun. Th that picture was taken two months before full invasion war started. And uh, everything was great, everything was okay. This is main theater, and this is the same main theater, what you can see here. And look on the picture in the left. They just burn it. We, have, we had four congregations of Church of Christ there. We had about uh, 200 Christians who lived in Mariupol. And uh, um, the buildings, what you can see, it's not, uh, it's not uh, hou small houses. It's uh, 14, 15, sometimes 20 floors of, of the buildings. F 500,000, so half million of population lived in this city. And uh, they just burn it. And uh, let me mention about the main theater. Uh, so you can see a damage, uh, what, what happened. Uh, people, when they lost, uh, when, when the Mariupol was surrounded by Russian forces, um, uh, people tried to, lost f uh, connection by phone, they lost internet, they lost uh, power. Uh, so we're blessed to have power here. Uh, uh, people lost uh, a lot of water and food, so they tried to come together in one place to share uh, supplies what they have. And uh, why it, uh, they use main theater? It's because uh, usually in our area, main theaters has a f uh, one or two floors underground. It's not real bomb shelters, but it's a shelter. It's underground floor. So and our people. Um, I mean, Ukrainians who was in charge of this uh, place where people tried to be together, they wrote, you cannot see, but you can Google it and, uh, and find it in Google, they wrote here big letters, uh, uh, they wrote word kids or children, that the Russian pilots who bombing the city can see that in that spot, and you can see this is just main theater, no military targets, you can see around this, uh, around this, uh, main theater, it's a downtown, it's no military bases or whatever, and uh, 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 so the Russian pilots, what bomb city, can see that in that spot, a lot of kids, about, if I'm correct, it's about 300 kids was there, about 1,000 people was there, and uh, they wrote in Russian language, let me mention, not everyone understand that, Ukraine is a different country from uh, Russian, Ukraine is a different language, it's a different culture, from Russia. So they wrote on the Russian language that the Russian pilots will see there is a kids and look at what they did with a purpose, with a purpose. Officially 548 children died as a result of the Russian war against Ukraine. You can see this performance was taken in Lviv in my town, in downtown of Lviv. Uh, and by the way, Washington and people who was uh, who were uh, visit Lviv, you can recognize down streets of uh, of Lviv. You can see empty strollers and car seats. Its performance show to people that how many kids we uh, we lost. And this is just official number because we don't have opportunity to go to the occupied territories and find the bodies. What they did, they killed so many people. They killed so many children. Uh, they, they had a lot of uh, cri war crimes, crimes, sexual crimes uh, uh, on Ukrainian uh, uh, territory uh, with Ukrainian people. So I want to make attention of that. And uh, what we want to, we want just to live our lives and raise, raise our kids. Uh, what I told you before uh, when we had a uh, communion, 
before 2014, uh, Ukraine uh, did not participate in any wars, in any wars. And I think it's just unjust war because they invade our country, they invade our, our cities, they took our homes. We have 8 million uh, people of refugees. What we will do with them if they will take our territory? Where we will, where will, where will, what we will do with the, these people? But let me uh, mention about uh, church and what church doing. Uh, I will mention a little bit about uh, my church. It's the Lviv Church of Christ. Uh, we have helped thousands of Ukrainians and preach through this gospel. We feed people, we house people, we uh, give them clothes, we uh, pray with people. And uh, let me mention about the brother on, on the back. Uh, this woman, she's not a member of the church, she just came. You can see a lot of bags here and the crowd of people. Every single Sunday we have 20 or 30 uh, new people, new refugees. Because in, in Lviv it's about more than 100 or 200,000 refugees who run away from the uh, front line. So it's a lot of refugees. In our church, work with, uh, every Sunday, we worked with a uh, uh, different group of uh, people. Like every Sunday, it's 20 or 30 new people who came to uh, 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 take help and they hear the gospel from us. And I won't mention this brother. He's more than 20, more than 20 or 25 years in, in, in Christ. He has almost all his kids, except smallest, they, they uh, become a Christians. He's so good man, his name Alexander. So he's so good man, he's so good Christian, when he, uh, but he twicely refugee. In 2014, he had to leave his hometown because Russian came to Donetsk and occupied his town. And he lost all his home, his job, and he had to move from Donetsk to another city. And in 2022, Russians came to his town again, a new town, and he again lost everything. He has, he has lost his home, he has lost his, uh, he has lost his uh, uh, job. And when he came with his family to Lviv and we sitting with him and talk, I talked to him, he told me, Stas, I've lost myself. I do not know what I'm going to do in this life anymore. I twice uh, uh, lost everything. I twice become, uh, I third time uh, start my life again. He's close, uh, around 50 years old. And what we can tell him, but look on his smile after some days of his some recovering in, in Lviv. It cannot be 100% uh, recovering because, uh, uh, for example, one month ago, my town was bombed. bombed. Uh, one month ago, when I were here, my, my town was bombed. Uh, seven people was killed in downtown. 50 people was wounded. No military target. They just did it with the purpose to kill as much they can. And uh, uh, even in that situation, he recovered a little bit from his loss. And uh, we asked him, can you be a leader of humanitarian aid uh, uh, service? Because you understand these people as much more than anyone. You lost twice everything. You know what to tell to these people. You understand these people and look on his smile. Yes, he, it's, it's a very hard smile. But he's serving to the God. And, you know, uh, he inspired me so much. Every single Sunday after worship, we worship in together with the guests, with everyone. And then we split church going to the class. And, and uh, uh, people who came for help, refugees, uh, they have their own class, refugee class, 20 or 30 people. And uh, before they sent, uh, they delivered, they gave this food for them. He asked all, all the people, are you sure you safe spiritually? And people, some people like raise their hand, they like confident in their safety uh, spiritually. Because uh, our people, most of our people uh, religious, believe in God. Uh, less people reading, read the Bible, but most of our people believe in God. So, and he asked, are you sure you're saying? Some people raise their hand. And after that, he has 10 or 15 minutes, he shared just the gospel with them. What, you need, what do you need to do to save uh, your uh, life, to save your life for God, to save your soul, to, uh, came to heaven. And then he asked again, are you sure you're safe right now after what you hear? Just because of this program, uh, last year we had seven baptism just by that program. And that people still come into the church. And let me show you more uh, of distribution of humanitarian aid in the, in the church. And uh, I want to mention this picture. 
It's me, by the way, in uniform, and I handled some food. You can see the pizza. I have a good story for you. Uh, when, <laughs> when uh, I hopefully all the story good, but I have a little funny story, if it can be funny. Uh, uh, one day, uh, Sunday worship, right now we have, so we start congregation with six people, right now we have 90 people, uh, nine zero to be sure in my pronunciation. Uh, and uh, uh, and after, after uh, finish our worship service, uh, we don't have a bell, we don't have a time what mentioned that preacher can stop, so uh, <laughs> people just enjoy to worshiping, spend the time together, <laughs> we do not push uh, people from the church, I don't know, <laughs> so, and uh, we spend so long time in the church till lunch, so, and people was uh, hungry, it's, it's remind me a little bit the Bible story when uh, apostles tried to feed the people who was uh, hun they they saw, but we didn't have a Jesus around us. We didn't have a person who can multiply this uh, fish and bread. So, but the problem was, it's uh, we had eight or ninety people. I don't remember in that days, but problem was uh, all foreigner companies like McDonald's and KFC and other companies they left us in the beginning of the war. All embassies, all foreigner people, it was really hard time for Ukrainians because we stay alone. It's a very bad feeling to stay alone. Uh, so, and we thought like what we need to do to, with, with other brothers, leaders in the church, like what we need to do? Just one company stayed in our country. I believe they need to pay me for that commercial. <laughs> Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Do we have people who work on Domino's? Maybe they can share this with them. I, I talking about this with all churches. So Domino's Pizza stayed. And can you j just imagine this situation? You call to Domino's, you order like 20 or 30 pizzas, and the person who need to deliver this pizza to the church, sirens everywhere, sometimes bombing everywhere, and the person delivered by his bicycle pizza to the church. Just imagine this, this picture. Okay, uh, during the war, during the two uh, years of the war, there were 25 baptisms in the Lviv church. And all over Ukraine, it was about 500 baptisms. So this picture is taken just in my congregation, just in my church. The last two and a half years, we had a 25 baptism. This young lady, I told you that I will mention the sister, what I know, uh, uh, who, who is a, a professional um, military. As I said, I'm not professional soldier. I just fought on a war. So uh, she's she's a choo choose to be a, a military in before all of that. So uh, and uh, um, uh, my first job in the military, I was a hunter for kamikaze drones. It's a big drones like a truck. And she was sometimes uh, participating my team. And sometimes we have to be in a, wor in a service uh, 24, 25 hours, like our, it's our day, 24, 25 hours. And sometimes she was uh, in my team. What do you think the preacher will going to do, professional preacher, not professional soldier, will going to do 24, 25 hours? Poor lady. She heard all my stories. She heard all, <laughs> all the Bible. But uh, thanks God she became a Christian uh, through that uh, situation. Yeah. <laughs> Let me mention next picture. This is uh, uh, sometimes I had, this is me in uniform and uh, a, a few uh, people from our church, my wife, Alexander, what I mentioned about him who lost everything. And this is uh, our, uh, right now, he, this is our brother Anatoly. Sometimes I had to baptize immediately after serving in the army in, in uniform. So when 24 hours or 25 hours was uh, in Saturday, it's mean in Sunday, I have to be in a church. And not because I'm a ministry, because I'm a Christian who need to remember about God, first of all. And I want to encourage you about that 
We have to be there not because we have some responsibility on front of people first, because we have responsibility on front of our, of our God, of our Jesus. So, and uh, uh, just imagine this situation, 24, 25 hours, hard job, hard work, then in the morning without sleeping, you're going to the church, to worshiping in the church, and then after worshiping in the church, uh, some people come to you and ask, can we go to the lake and uh, you will baptize me? I say, sure, we can. Uh, later, in the evening of this day, after everything, my wife asked me a question. Did you hear yourself when you baptized Anatoly? I say, what? You're talking to him like in, in, in the army. Like, do you believe in Jesus? <laughs> do you repent of your sins? <laughs> I was tired. I was really tired. 40 hours on the legs. And I want to encourage you. If you think you're tired to go to worshiping your God, I want to encourage you to think one more time because it's a priorities. We cannot be tired for God. We cannot be tired for our, our Lord. We can't. It's our huge and big responsibility. So, um, since the beginning of the world, Lviv Church has been meeting six times a week. We try to be, uh, do not reply to everything from states. You usually, churches in states, I recognize, they usually meet in Wednesday and Sunday. Sometimes between these days, but usually it's Wednesday and Sundays. We meet every day except Wednesday. <laughs> so this is a crowd of people. It's uh, one Sunday we had a hundred people in the church. Um, our, your brothers and sisters, members of this church, have been in this, uh, in this uh, uh, facility. So um, we have women classes on the Monday. We have uh, Lviv Bible uh, School on deep study of the Bible, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, we have uh, kids classes. We have a uh, youth group classes. And again, Sunday worship service. Some, you can see on this picture, sometimes people doesn't, don't have a place even to see you can see in the bag. So uh, we have a lot of people right now who need to uh, hear the gospel. They in the big need. Nothing dist distract them from spiritual things. Uh, I believe when we when we read book of Ecclesiastes, we can find the uh, uh, we can find the passage about uh, time for war, time for peace, time for that, time for that. And I believe right now it's a time to share the gospel in my country for sure. Just imagine 500 baptism for the last two and a half year. People right now in need to hear the gospel. People right now need to hear the hope. They, they have a hope because they lost so much. So I believe right now it's a time to preach the gospel uh, everywhere, even Atlanta, but for sure in Ukraine. Uh, we have we work a lot for refugee house in our in our uh, congregation church does a lot of work to make this possible for our brothers and sisters who lost everything we bought uh, building and try to rebuild that they will have some place what they can call home like brother Alexander and his family now uh, uh, you know when you when you when we will finish maybe uh, uh, today uh, you will go and you will say bye I'm going to home they don't have opportunity to say that. They lost their homes. So it's why we try to uh, build something that they, what they can call home. When they will finish the worship or uh, get out from the work, they can say, I'm going to home. Of course, it's not their personal home, I mean, what they had. But we try, we try to do that for them. About 20 uh, people right now live in this refugee house. Uh, all over Ukraine, uh, church have increased their uh, service, baptisms, and evangelism. Despite the bombs, missile shots, kamikaze drones, context, uh, constant uh, danger uh, to life and health. I know that your congregation support a new congregation was, was established, what was established in Chernigiv. It's right over here. Chernigiv is right over here. Lviv is here. The front line, this is river and front line. Oh, like that, almost half of the country on the front line, what, more than 1,000 miles of front line. So, uh, new congregations were founded during the war. Dnipro, Chernigiv, uh, Ushgarat, Mykolaiv, and other, uh, and other cities uh, we, can ha we have. And uh, I want to share this picture. Uh, it's a Dnipro Church of Christ, one of my good friends, Alexander, another Alexander. We have a lot of Alexanders in our country. 
like every, almost every second person is Alexander. Uh, uh, so he is a good preacher from Dnipro. He established congregation in, uh, uh, he and his team established congregation in 2023 and look on 20 uh, this picture was taken 2024 how much they people have they have not all of them are christian i don't want to trick with you it's uh, but these people it's about 10 or 12 christians there but all of this crowd came to them and they work with refugees they share the gospel they share the message about how the people can be saved spiritually and you can see by your own eye and the uh, last picture what i want to mention it's a winter retreat what we have in the Carpathian Mountains. It's a uh, leaf church uh, tried to make uh, about 200 people on the picture. We tried to gave people to give people uh, from all over Ukraine uh, a place where they can be three days off out out from the war because uh, in the mountains uh, usually we don't have strikes or kamikaze drones because of mountains. And uh, three days uh, every year in the end of January, we have a uh, time when we, um, when we gathering people, refugees, and pray together, just spend three days of quiet with the Bible and with the pray. And it is very important for us. If you can any help to us with that, it will be awesome if you can help with the winter retreat. Uh, and uh, uh, our kids can be three days uh, out from the sirens. For example, my son, middle son George, he has PTSD. When always when he hears sirens in the middle of the night, he wake up, he crying and screaming and pointed to the window because he know what's will going on, what can be going on after that. So we really happy that we w we can have this three days out from the. We call this like a spiritual shelter, what we can have in Ukraine. So please support Ukraine, pray for Ukraine, and stand with Ukraine. I very thank you for your time. I very thank you that I took 10 more minutes probably of your time. I thank you that you did not make a bell. <laughs> I thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. Thank you. <laughs>